Hey everyone, welcome back to the Overseers. My name is Proelios and I'm joined as usual by Nightwing. We are very excited today. We are going to be reviewing the Toronto Defense roster for Season 4 of the Overwatch League. And Nightwing, what do you think about this roster as a whole? Because some interesting changes coming in and once again a complete rehaul of this team. Overhaul of this team, sorry. I think this this team does has, have some like interesting pieces and it's going to be interesting to see how individually these pieces pop off. Um, but the, the team as a whole is still a bit of a question mark, I think. It's something that we'll really have to wait and watch. Mm -hmm. So, as usual, guys, we'll be going over the tank line first, then the DPS, then the supports, then the coaching stuff, and then rounding things off with any final thoughts. So, let's get right into it. Uh, do you have any anything to say before we begin? Um, not really. I think uh, probably one thing I could say is just that this is a team that's kind of been formed uh, a little bit out of the paths of Philadelphia Fusion. Obviously, just Sado and Hisu coming out of that. But apart from that, these players don't have a lot of synergy together and really any synergy they would have built uh, would have been through these this small off-season. Mm -hmm. Well, not small, but this off-season. Uh, that's kind of felt like a dry spell for a lot of news recently, actually. But I think that's probably going to be one of their weaker spots, uh, just because of the nature of being a newly formed team and not having pre-existing synergy. Right. That's that's pretty much all I have to say before we head into like the individual players. Yeah, yeah, fair point, and that's what actually makes this team a lot more interesting because they have pieces of like varying skill levels so i'm just excited to see how they work together right like you said so let's jump into the tank line for the defined and that is beast and sado on main tank and michelle on off tank and i think i'll let you start off with the with the main tanks here nightwing go ahead okay uh let's start off with beast i think uh, nobody was particularly particularly impressed with Beast last season. I think he's probably one of the most forgettable uh, main tanks in the league, at least last season. Uh, I think the only uh, only one that would contend with him would be like Shredlock. I mean, uh, Hydration at least wasn't forgettable because he's a DPS player on main tank. But, but I mean, you can barely remember what Beast and Shredlock did apart from like feeding. So... Yeah, I think he's probably going to take a backseat to the the other Chad main tank, uh, the the one that's actually known more for feeding, but but is significantly better than Beast in my opinion. That's Sado, coming in from Philadelphia Fusion, who had a, a really good second place season um, throughout last year. Um, when when the Overwatch League started, Sado got a lot of criticism for the kind of uh, play style that he played because he would pretty much just go feed and die and then make and and that that is what he like he would use to create space for his team uh, and then his dps would pop off um and that's something that he received a lot of heavy criticism for but i think over time sado and the team uh the entire team of philadelphia had kind of uh, figured out how to work around that and uh, really he looked like one of the most premier main tanks in the league um probably not top one top two but like he's he's almost there uh last season and i think uh he has the same coach coaching him so maybe he can find a play style that still works for him even though i i would say that for sado the the entire team is a bit of a step down um i think sado can still show some in incredibly interesting moments because of his uh, <laughs> effectively his feeder play style <laughs> at times um if, if there's someone you're going to see charge people off the map it's going to be sado this season so yeah he, he's definitely i think going to take precedence over beast over almost any main tank um unless they want to feel beast and develop him, him into maybe uh, like a ball only player or something like that because Sado while he has played some ball it's not exactly uh, very top tier from what I know of his ball 
so if they want to be, put beast on uh, like a ball only role because that guy that that hero is finding a place in the meta um you look at double bubble meta right now um it, it's basically either people are playing double bubble uh, but on maps where winston is not very viable people either move uh, over to the ryan zarya brawl comp or they're going with like a ball zarya uh, mm-hmm. where winston cannot find that much space uh, because the, the way that the monkey has to play he basically just has to, has to hide until everyone is in position then he has to jump in whereas ball can just keep rolling around because he has infinite hp he can go grab a, a mega at basically any time so that's probably i think the kind of rotation that i would like to see uh, between the main tanks saru playing for the most part beast being put in for the sillier <laughs> the sillier heroes so that, that yeah so that's that's what i think about the main tanks you want to kick us off with the off tanks uh yeah sure so oh wait oh wait sorry sorry give me your what are your thoughts on on the main tanks <laughs> well, thanks for I, asking I'm completely, <laughs> completely don't know what my, uh, my podcast now <laughs> it's our podcast man that's fine um so it's a beast right um i think overall yeah uh he wasn't that impressive to me either last season but there were parts where like after numlock was added to the team right numlock sort of became their starting main tank for most of the season but then when it was a rain mera beast was brought back in and i honestly feel like his rain was pretty good he was landing smart shatters he was just managing his resources better overall than numlock i mean i'm not just comparing him to numlock actually but uh he played a pretty good rain but like that that's not much to go with right like he plays a good rain but what about his winston is what is his ball so overall i think he's like not a poor player he's just not as good as many others on their respective heroes um but even even if i think of him as let's say a rain specialist right they've got saro on the team who also stepped up his rain game last year and i mean honestly beast is not the only guy i have a slightly surprising opinion on I feel like Saro although talented was a bit overrated last year because of how good his team was. He honestly seemed like he he was a really really good main tank because his teammates pocketed him that hard. Like the the main tank market this year is honestly stacked and if his if the Toronto refine this year don't enable Saro as well as the Philly fusion did last year. I don't see him being that good of a main tank overall but because essentially he was I mean what was he he was like bumper on steroids right he was just going in and doing his thing and his team was babysitting him to the best of their ability but saro was like he actually has skill right we know how good his winston is his rain was extremely good last year he landed fat shadows he blocked a lot of shadows really well and overall just really he was very aware while playing rain hard uh, we already know zoris was good from the 2018 season uh balls not that good like you said so maybe yeah they do develop beast into a ball player but overall the main tank duo is a little bit iffy in my opinion uh beast is not really going to make like you know he's not someone who's going to carry them into the playoffs and sado is a slight question mark for me because of um uh, because i'm not sure if his team will enable him in the same way that the fusion did last year So those are my overall thoughts on the main tanks and uh do you have any counterpoints to that actually because I think there might be some disagreement here. Yeah, I think we're not entirely in agreement, but I do see where you're coming from definitely. I think Fusion last year did I think more than their coaching they probably lucked out or well they thought through the the drafting process a lot better. They signed really good players that really bolstered their ranks. and i think that's kind of what helped them climb up the league standings uh because they they did sign some insane players like hisu uh which we'll talk about later which yeah you it's a completely fair point to say that that does put saru in a better light uh i guess we'll get more of a fair assessment of uh, what his skill level is uh, after he has been somewhat redeemed and mm. now we can watch him on a slightly lower tier of team and see 
uh, kind of what his gameplay looks like. Um, but yeah, I think apart from that, you're, you're pretty much right about Beast. Uh, his Ryan did look better than Numlocked at times, but also I feel like Numlocked is not really the standard of player that you would like to uh, compare to, to the level of Overwatch League anymore, honestly. Yeah. Even though he's been on Valiant as well as Toronto, and he's hopped around some decently performing uh, contenders teams, I feel like he, he's... Just a little bit washed uh, <laughs> compared to compared to the talent coming into and already established inside the league. Um, I think it's kind of a good thing that Philly are playing in uh, in the Asia region instead of any in terms of their main tanks because I would not like to go can uh, go up against Washington's main tank as well as the main tank duo for Shock. Mm -hmm. So, but then again, they have very stiff competition and tanks like Gushu for Hangzhou and uh, okay, dude, who was the other guy? I cannot remember. Who's the guy for NYXL? Yakpa. I, I... No, not Yakpa. No, which which other team? Oh, it it was uh, Fate for Shanghai. Yeah, th th that's the stiff competition, not Yakpunk. <laughs> Very if about Yakpunk still, but yeah, players, Overwatch, gaming. Mm -hmm. Yes. We can talk about the offline now. Yeah, so, uh, all right, so then I'll just talk about Michelle, uh, who's coming in from the Seoul Dynasty this year. Um, we didn't get to see much of him last year because Seoul preferred playing Marvel on off tank for most of the season for some reason. I don't know if it was like synergy issues or what, but they just played Gesture Marvel for maybe like 90% of the season, right? And they just spammed Double Shield as much as possible, which played to both of their strengths. la -di da 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 So, what about Michelle, right? A bit in the shadows, this guy, he played in the 2019 season as their starting off tank. Uh, overall, he was decent. I wouldn't say he was anything special. He flexed to the Sombra so that the Dynasty could play Sombra Goats. Um, but, like, I mean, he's probably serviceable. That's all I can really say about him, not, like, having seen him play for, like, what feels like a year at this point, right? So, nothing exceptional, serviceable player, probably going to be average. That's all I have to say about him. Yeah, I think you're pretty much right. Michelle just got swallowed up by Soul's decision to keep playing Marvel, a main tank player on Sigma. I mean, his Sigma is not bad. Don't get me wrong, but the the off tank player was not able to play off tank because because the main tank was playing the off tank. So yeah, we did not get to see a lot of Michelle. When I think of Michelle, I think of his league average, probably diva gameplay, and not much else. Um, he has shown some other colors uh, here and there, but really nothing to be uh, too excited about. I think at least he'll have some play time. He'll get enough scrim time. I don't even know how much uh, Michelle was really getting to play considering they kept spamming Marvel on, on Double Shield on Sigma. So maybe if he gets some more experience under K KDG, which who did lead a decent roster with Philadelphia last season, oh, yeah. may maybe he can kind of up his skill level and kind of reprove himself. Mm -hmm. But KDG I did not... work with, sorry to cut you off, but KDG did work with Michelle in season two of the league with the Soul Dynasty. So maybe, maybe he saw something in him there, uh, which he's trying to get on board on this team. But yeah, that's all I wanted to point out. Go ahead. Yeah, considering that the level of off tank talent in the league is quite huge. Um, I, I guess if KDG did so, see something... Uh, about macro play rather than individual like pop off play that that a lot of these damage dealing sigmas did last season. Uh, if KDG sees something in Michelle, then maybe maybe he's got something going for him. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that we we'll really have to wait and see, because I think I guess we can talk about this more in 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 the KDG part of it. But yeah. like I said earlier, I think they 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 did draft good players for Philadelphia last season, which is not. It's not entirely just KDG's coaching. I think uh, it draws a parallel to Packet, Packington. Not a parallel, it's more like a perpendicular to Packington, who picked up kind of an unknown roster and 
turned it into the elo valiant that you saw last season mm. i think kdg kind of lucked up with that so uh yeah we'll see if he's got something going with michel mm-hmm. maybe he was just impressed with how michel essentially baited out nene's grab on rialto <laughs> causing one of the most pepe hands moments in the history of the overwatch league But, yeah yeah maybe he's actually maybe he just he was considering signing nene and then michel just blew him away <laughs> who knows yeah. or maybe he just likes the name michel's a nice name there there's there's a few nice names in in overwatch league but there's it's just a name of a person it's like jimmy joey michel who the hell is joey there's a joey good names then 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 here we are you know why we're not in overwatch league it's not because we're we're like plat diamond players it's because we have stupid names like nightwing and prolios you're right actually you know if we if we just kept like if i was named john maybe i'd maybe i'd get signed but but see the, the, at least i'm close to being somewhere in the overwatch league cuz my name's close to an actual caster's name so i you're think close. i can actually get there <laughs> Close to being a map in the Overwatch League. <laughs> oh yeah, it's yeah, true. You're right. Fun fact: I actually did not name myself Proelius because of the map Elios, but more on that another day. I think let's move on to the DPS line of the Toronto Refined, shall we? Yeah, all right. All right. So the Refined have currently got three DPS. That's Logix, Hisu, and Nice. And I think I'll let you start off on Logix, who's been there on this team since last year. So yeah, go ahead. Logix is just the most thankable person on the roster because thank Mr. Logix for everything. Um, you saw him. You've been seeing him over the years, ever since kind of the release of the game, just being a really good player. uh made his name kind of known with his tracer uh especially with misfits and then moved on to the first season of florida mayhem did not see a lot of success uh, got relegated to contenders with xl2 um uh, and you know he struggled a bit but he he does have some insane mechanics um and he can really put fear into some of the best widows in the league with his sheer mechanics even when his team is kind of underperforming um i think that's why you saw him put in over sure for a lot of the time sure for being another widow uh, player that people really respect because you, if you remember sure for was also the one that uh, was winning widow 1v1s very consider- consistently earlier and sure for is the widow that they used for uh, the, the great bamboozle as well so oh, yeah. if they pick logics over him that that's saying something mm-hmm. so yeah mechanically very talented uh as a tracer widow main myself i have a lot of respect for logics but i think he at times is falling behind because of the crazy amount of player turnover there is in the league that brings in just this insane new talent every every season but i think he's still got some fire in him um and i would love to see mr logics perform once more um i think the level of the team is not exceptional and i cannot expect poor mr logics to carry the entire team to the top but i i don't know i just want to see like a widow 4k from him or something just a couple of times during the season i'll be satisfied with his play he he's not a bad player but there are obviously some insane dps players in the league and i think he might struggle to keep up with them he, he will still manage to be league average on on his specialist heroes at minimum i think I have at least that much faith in him. Mm-hmm. Um, what do yeah. you think? So I feel like Logics. I mean, yeah, he's known for his tracer, but he didn't show us a lot on him in the twenty twenty season, did he? Um, he had a few good moments still, I would say. I mean, nothing extremely noteworthy. Um, he was even on the team back in twenty nineteen, where I think his best moments were probably on the Widow. I remember that one Horizon game where he was just popping off against probably the Outlaws I want to say but um overall I think although yeah I mean yeah his mechanics are really good but 
how good is he as an overall player when it comes to the entire Overwatch League, right? Because there's just so many insane tracer players out there, so many insane hits again players out there. Does he really compare? I don't think so. I think he's probably like a below average player at this point. Um, especially considering that he's being surrounded by completely, al- almost a completely Korean team. Uh, I do believe that the comms for this team will still be in English. Uh, because, like, Beast and Logic's obviously English speakers. Saro, Hisu, and Nice have all, and Lasto have all been on mixed rosters before. But it can sometimes help to just speak the, the language of most of your teammates, right? So, I don't know uh, how it's going to pan out even from the communication side. But overall, not too high on logics at this point. But I do believe that he can, if he puts up consistent performances, he can bring some value to the team. That's what I feel. Uh, yeah, I think uh, over time, uh, like I, I should at least correct myself in saying that while he is mechanically skilled, um, over the seasons, if you watch a se- uh, like a war from season one, you'll see that players are just not taking angles correctly, and they're not uh, really like they're taking free damage and just getting their head picked off by like a widow player. I think mechanics have kind of, while they are still important, people have learned to work around them, and and uh, the dev team has added some really silly characters to to negate <laughs> mechanics over time. So. It's it's something that uh, just cannot uh, suffice alone. You have to be a smart player, uh, especially a tracer these days. There's so many different play styles that you need to keep swapping between. It's kind of like a like a round of Devil May Cry. If you if you, I, I don't know if you've played Devil May Cry, but there's like four play styles that Dante from Devil May Cry has to keep swapping between mm-hmm. to keep hitting his combos. And and that's kind of what you have to keep doing as tracer between team fights, where mm-hmm. sometimes you have to uh, look at the ults that your team has. If you have support ults, you can play super aggressive with your ball or monkey as tracer and try to get some uh, entry picks. If you don't have a lot of support ults, then you try and uh, deny the enemy tracer who is going for your backline, mm-hmm. because then your supports don't have their ults to save themselves. Like your Zen can't solo trans himself, as as dumb as that might sound. So, yeah, I think you have to be a much smarter tracer player these days. And yeah, I think average, below average is, I I can agree with that. I think Logics might just end up there, especially considering that uh, he's going to look that way with how not promising the, well, not not completely not promising, but not not top tier Mm -hmm. level of his team. Mm -hmm. All right. Should we then move on to Hisu? Yeah. Mm, okay, do you want to kick us off on that? Yeah, sure. Hisu comes in, uh, people flame him for uh, being chosen over Carpe, but but I think Hisu really proved himself uh, last year. And I think uh, exceptionally, uh, his Sombra was always there. He was probably the only Sombra that you would really compare to the likes of Lip. Um, and then under that tier, you'd probably put someone like Doha, maybe. But I think Hisu and Lip were definitely on that kind of S tier of Sombras. Um, and also, you saw some very good hit scan looks from him. I remember this game on Havana where Hisu was just clicking heads um, while everyone in the ch- chat was typing, Where is Carpe? Where is Carpe? Hisu, <laughs> Hisu just goes and gets like a 3k, 4k on Widow, and, and nobody can do anything about him because. He's just cracked. Um, so yeah, I think he he was a really good pickup that K, KDG is bringing from Philadelphia back to, um, like, with him to Toronto. And uh, Hisu and Sado have some pre-existing synergy. I, I think this is definitely one of the best players on the roster for me. And, yeah, I think he's just a player to look out for. I, I think Hisu can legitimately... He, he has a lot of flexibility, uh, in my opinion, as well. Mm-hmm. While we might, may not have seen like an insane amount, like a rascal amount of flexibility, he did still flex up quite often. And 
he he looked pretty good on pretty much all the heroes that he played. I, in my opinion, I think he's going to be a really good player this season as well. Uh, I totally agree, man. I think Hisu is a criminally underrated player. He was overshadowed by Kape, uh, and all the Kape fans were naturally adamant that Hisu is not going to be that good. But I feel like Hisu has more than proven himself. Uh, he was criticized a bit towards the end of the season, uh, d- when they when the fusion were in the Asia region for the playoffs, but I mean the whole team got boomed there, right? It wasn't Hisu's fault alone, so we just have to go based off his average performance with this team, and overall he's just like a star player. I think he's his sombra was elite, his hit scan play was elite. Uh, he also has the flexibility to play Reaper, which not a lot of, not all his can players can play a good Reaper, right? He, and Kape is actually one of them. But overall, Hisu just brings an immense amount of potential to the roster, and I feel like he's one of those players that can carry games. And he, I don't think he's going to let his team hold him back. And I feel like if you've got like a dive meta, let's say with Sado and Hisu playing Winston and Sombra, then you've actually got like a winning lineup already. Uh, like two Korean players with more than a year of pre-existing synergy playing two of the signature heroes. And that's like, it's it's such a formidable combination. And the amount yeah, of you, value... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You put Sado on Winston, you put Hisu on Sombra, you put Logics on Tracer, you're good to go. Exactly. See, that's, that's a really scary lineup, honestly. I... I mean, we are not at the power rankings episode just yet. That's still a ways off, but uh, really on the fence about where to, where to put this team because great potential. But yeah, let's let's uh, get there when we get there, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do you have any more points to add about Hiso? No, I I think he's just. I mean, he's just good. Just, he's just good. There's there's nothing to it. <laughs> Yeah. All right, then let's talk about Neist, who's um, a flex DPS player coming in from T1. Um, he, I mean, I, I don't, I haven't seen him play much recently, uh, but I remember watching him a fair bit while he was playing for uh, uh, F- Fusion Academy, right? Is what it's called? Philly Fusion's Academy team? Yeah. Yeah. F U. Yeah, Fusion University, my bad. Fusion University. So, I remember him playing for that squad, especially during GOATS. And this guy has a wide hero pool. He's kind of like a mini version of Rascal, I think. He can play hit scan heroes, projectile heroes, flankers. Um, overall, I, I don't think he's like really good at like any of them. At, at least, I mean, not at least, just with respect to league standards. In contenders, naturally, he made an impact. That's why he was so good with Fusion. But ever since he left from there, he hasn't been that good, from what I've seen. Uh, overall, I think his white hero pool will definitely benefit the team uh, in the sense that they can be competitive in a few more metas. But I, I'm i not too impressed with his overall quality of play, which is why I don't think it's a really high-value pickup. That's all pretty much I have to say. If you put Rascal on this lineup... It would be a different story, but it's not Rascal, right? It's nice. And, I mean, his level of gameplay is probably just nice. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Yeah, it's nice, yeah. <laughs> He's going to get 69 limbs in a match. <laughs> yeah. I think for... Uh, he did get benched a lot over the other DPS talent, if I remember correctly, for Fusion University. Like, you saw sometimes Snido on a two-way contract benching him. You saw... Like Zerg, Zachary, Zerg, which mm. was this really young, uh, like widow one player, I think that got got accusated by Kefri, if I remember correctly. Nice. There was a lot of insane DPS talent on that roster, mm. uh, but Nice did play occasionally. Uh, but I don't, I to be honest, I don't remember him as much as I remember the other DPS on that roster. Even I used to watch a lot of Fusion University games, but I I cannot remember what Nice used to play like to be honest. Yeah, he, he just played everything, whatever the team needed, essentially. So, he played. He primarily played Sombra during the GOATS meta because the team wanted to flex on that hero. 
but he was yeah. I mean, he was good on Sombra, but you've got Hisu, so why would you play Nice on Sombra? Uh, then he played McCree, but then you've got Hisu for McCree. Then why would you play Nice on McCree? You you get where I'm going with this. He's probably just going to cover those projectile roles. Nice like. is Nice is going to be the beast of DPS, and Hisu is going to be the <laughs> the Sado of DPS. Yeah. From from what you're saying. Yeah, essentially, because I mean, I remember Nice playing like there was one match. I th- I think it was with Runaway. I can't remember during Contenders itself, naturally. But he played like Sombra, Makri, Doomfist, and something else. I think he played a bit of Zarya, all all on like one map. Like he's he's that flexible, and teams have so much faith in him. I don't know, man. Like it's it's like a really odd pickup for me because there there were other flex DPS options I would have definitely gone with over him. And considering you've got logics for traditional hit scan if the need be, and for tracer, and then Hisu who who can pretty much play all the hit scans and Sombra as well. He's a really odd pickup, but yeah, I guess you need someone to cover the projectile roles, and he was he he came at a low price, I guess. You know what uh, him playing mystery heroes reminds me of? Reminds me of the way Mirror is being used for Alec Gladiators. Mm. Maybe maybe that's the kind of role they, they're looking to put him in. Possible, possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. But, yeah, go on, go on. Yeah, I think that's, that's it for the DPS, right? Yeah. Let's do the supports. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, the support line for the Defiant is currently Ansun J on main support and the pair of Aztec and Lastro on flex support. So, uh, we'll just quickly talk about Ansun J and I literally mean quickly because there's not much I have to say about him. Uh, he's from Element Mystic. Uh, I haven't watched much footage about him to be honest he's he's actually a relatively new player to the he, he was new even to the tier 2 scene um but from what i hear he's a really great player uh, i haven't watched enough of his gameplay to actually form a clear cut opinion about him and study his playstyle uh but i haven't heard like anyone actually saying that he's mediocre or he's bad like i've only actually heard positive comments so I'm really optimistic about this pickup because generally when someone is that new um, and they are still picked up by an OWL team uh, with the exception of IM37, uh, I think that they've definitely got certain some potential that's, um, I mean, that's which is there, right? Like, And with, with Ansun J especially comes from Element Mystic, which is one of the uh, more respected teams in Korea. So that adds a little bit more weight to his pickup in my opinion. So... Overall, just really optimistic about him. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Wasn't Hansun J playing with MCD in on an element mystic? Or yeah. was that some... Uh, so he was there with MCD on the lineup, but I think they put Jehun in for this Briggs and meta, which, like, essentially the ball sig meta, right? Where they were playing either Briggs and or sometimes Mora Lucio if they were playing rush comps, but... Just, yeah, I mean, he hasn't seen much playtime recently, though. Oh, he's getting benched by a big player. That's <laughs> unlucky. Yeah. I, I feel you, Ansun Yeah. I, I don't like Brig. I Just for that, I, I want to see him do well in the league. Plus, he, he's an element mystic player, and that team just seems to pump out superstars somehow over mm-hmm. and over again. So, maybe maybe Ansun Jay will fall into that category as well. Not mm. not super optimistic, but there's a chance. Yeah. And then KD just clearly taking that chance. So hopefully it works out for them. Yeah, I think overall KDG we can... Okay, never mind. I'll just speak about that later on. But yeah, I think let's talk about the flex supports. And I think you can go first here, Nightwing. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's Mr. Sex Big Dick in, in Last Row. <laughs> Demonetized? That's okay. We 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 are not gonna earn any money off of this video. <laughs> Let's be honest. We should we should pay people to listen to these. <laughs> uh, 
Lastro, good player. I think kind of underrated just because uh, of the insane level of flex supports in the league. I think he and Rain made a really good combo with Valiant last season. And just kind of a sleeper pick uh, for flex support, I think. Uh, I think he can do really well. It's just that the level of flex supports, like I said, uh, is so high for these other teams that, I mean, Lastro will really have to prove his stuff once more, even though he, he did quite well with Valiant last season, um, being picked up by Packington with, like I said earlier, and kind of an unknown roster, basically, um, which was basically being called just like a failure of a team. That that Valiant team was also being called out uh, by critics for just that they won't be able to even win like open division. So coming from that to like this level that we did at last two at right now is an achievement. And I think he's going to be consistent and quite good. I don't, I don't think last two made any huge mistakes apart from uh, typing in chat uh, oh. during last season. So yeah, I think he's a consistent flex support that I want to see do well in the league. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I pretty much agree. I think he was great with the Valiant. Um, no matter what the meta was, he seemed to be fairly adept at playing it. He was good in rush comps on Moira. He was, his mechanics were great on Zen. He even actually flexed to Brig, which is something usually main supports play. But given how uncomfortable Rain was on it, uh, he let Rain play BAP and then he played Brig instead for the team. At least partially. Um, and yeah, his Ana was also pretty cracked in, in places. So I'm optimistic about his pickup. He is a proven talent at this point. And it's going to be interesting to see how the team dynamics work with uh, Aztec also competing for the starting flex support position for this team. And Aztec's coming in from WGS Phoenix. Uh, a contenders team that's risen up a lot in terms of um, just like level of play uh, thanks to Lori's coaching who's Lori who's now coaching the, the Boston Uprising um, and Aztec overall is just great he's, he's probably at the same level as Lastro uh, his zen was absolutely phenomenal in contenders and I have no doubt that he's one of those like players with really good mechanics so uh, his Ana is also seemingly really good so at least he's got Ana Zen covered and then maybe they put in Lastro if they need a, either a different play style or if they want to play Moira or if they want to play Brig but Ansun J is not good enough on Brig and this also I, yeah go on go on I don't think either of the players is like exceptional on BAP from what I've seen, like Zen, I think both of them play a good Zen mechanically speaking. Mm-hmm. I think Aztec might be slightly better, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, uh, with with like the rain, the the brig issue with rain, I think we didn't see a lot of BAP looks from Lastro. Yeah. So, I I guess that that might be a reason why they've picked up two uh, flex supports. Obviously, apart from just anticipating a double flex support meta which mm. is a good thing because we keep pointing that out in every other uh, episode. Yeah. So, yeah, I think the BAP might be a bit of a hole, but then they have two flex supports. They can just tell one flex support, you know what, here's, here's like $20, go buy a fresh account, install log BAP and ranked, get to top 500, and then we'll we'll just put you in when we need a BAP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could definitely do that and I mean I'm not really too concerned because if it, generally speaking if a player is good at managing their cooldowns they, they are good at BAP and because of that generally players who are good at Ana do well at BAP as well based on what I've seen that may or may not be true uh, but yeah I mean that's that's all I really have to say about the support line do you have any more points? No, I think we're we're good. Okay, so let's then move on and talk about KDG, right? Cannot go, like, we cannot leave him without just highlighting 
his position on this roster. He's coming in as the head coach with uh, former experience on the Philly Fusion. Uh, he really drove that team to great heights in the 2020 season. Uh, and I mean, overall, the scouting has proven to be really effective. And I can at least see that with the support line, right? I'm, I'm, so, I'm actually really excited to see the, their supports because they seem to have great potential. And he has brought in Saro and Isu as well, whom he has worked with before and go, like really drawn out their potential to the best of uh, his ability. And I feel like if, if he is going to try and have slot in Saro and Hisu as the starting players, which duh, he's obviously going to do that, uh, I feel like he's going to train the rest of his players to play around them as well. So, like I mentioned that issue about Saro not having enough resources on this team, uh, I'm a bit less concerned about that at this point because of KDG. Because if he can enforce that same kind of play style with this, uh, with this team, uh, it's going to actually be a much simpler job for them. Uh, because you've got one really solid playmaking main tank in Saru and one solid playmaking DPS in Hisu. So I really believe in what KDG is going for here. He's also got Michelle from Seoul, which I personally think is a really odd pickup. Uh, but, I mean, let's see. The The thing is, even though KDG is a good coach, Philly had star-studded talent across the board. So, I, I'm, I don't think he's going to get the same level of success he did with the Fusion. But, I, I honestly think he's onto something with this roster. I think he, he can shape this into something really special. A lot of team, uh, a lot of people, I think, are sleeping on how good KDG can be when it comes to just scouting and shaping lineups. So yeah, that's all I have to say about him, really. Uh, I think KDG did have success definitely last last season, um, but I, I'm a bit concerned about the kind of play rotations we're expecting him to make, considering that he did not really do those play rotations very well for Philly last season. I think he just... There were minor substitutions between Carpe and Hisu, but like I thought EQO was severely underutilized last season, for example. Uh, and I mean, I, he's just not quite probably the level of... Uh, at the level of player rotation that you would put Krusty in. Um, oh, but yeah, maybe sure. he's got... Yeah, because it felt like he would stick to a roster. Obviously, that does help because that particular roster, you pick up a roster of six, you make them run through every scrim, tire them out, but, but they know how their team synergy works. And that's something that I guess might be actually to their advantage compared to a more player rotatory kind of format because this team is, while he is picking up uh, Sado and Hisu from the same roster, the rest of the team needs to still uh, gel together. So... I mean, if he's going to stick with one roster, that's that's probably going to be good for the beginning of the season. But then he, he will have to kind of consistently develop his other players. Otherwise, uh, like if a particular meta comes up, th this team might struggle. I think it's it's fair to say that like this, this team might be a little bit of a sleeper pick just because it's not quite as established and like... Toronto is not exactly known for winning, but the the talent that KDG is bringing is is definitely something to really look out for. Um, it's just that apart from Hisu, I think you look at you have a few questions about Sado, his performance. You have a few questions about Michelle, how how good he's he gonna really be because he just kept getting benched by Marvel the entire time. Um, so so I have a few questions about the tank lineup. Uh, Logics is, I mean, I like Logics, but th there's a lot of other d better DPS players out there. Uh, I think about, apart from Hisu, then then you're looking at the support line, which, which are contenders players, and with contenders players, obviously there is a gamble uh, as to whether or not, like how well they will perform at the Overwatch League level. Uh, even though WGS definitely have uh, proven their supports to kind of be up there, uh, and like Korea contenders is as about as competitive as you can get apart from a Welsh league, so they've definitely got some weight to them. It's just that this team has a few more question marks than 
uh, some other teams which are which are a bit more set in their ways and still looking top notch. I think that's where the the sleeperness really comes from. Mm-hmm. It, it, all I can think of is how hilarious it's going to be if KDG plays Beast Sado as their starting tank line. <laughs> Mitchell's just going to be there like am I a joke to you at that point <laughs> I mean he has been a sole coach so I wouldn't put him past him but hopefully not yeah maybe he's just having like secret phone calls with Changun like who's the head coach of Seoul right now he's just telling him like you know just do this it'll be hilarious <laughs> I'll reimburse you for the for the salary of Ping Michelle that'll be top notch but yeah, I mean, yeah, that's probably not going to happen, and it shouldn't. It's just having a player there and not having them play is not only odd, but I think it it's a little bit insulting to the player themselves, unless they're honestly okay with being benched. Because I'm sure there are players who are completely fine doing that and focusing on streaming or helping out behind the scenes with coaching or things like that. But yeah, overall, what are your what what sort of vibe and what sort of Closing thoughts do you have about the drawn to Defined? I think my closing thoughts are similar to my opening thoughts. They have mm-hmm. some individually talented players. I just want to see how it works as a team. How the comps uh, structure works. That's up to the kind of scrims that they do, the kind of coaching that they do. And I, I guess, I think this is the season for KDG to prove himself more than last season. Because last season he had just like infinite money to just pick up whoever he wants. This season, they've, they've gone a little bit lower, probably, Toronto Defined, even even though the, the team was actually stating that, you know, we really, really want to win. And so mm-hmm. they have picked up a good roster, but it's it's a new roster, and there's always going to be some bumps in the road regarding that. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's something that, that I'm interested in seeing. I think there are a lot of strong teams in, in Asia that uh, Toronto... No, sorry, not Asia. I mean NA that yeah. that uh, Toronto will have to compete with. I I just looked at KDG and I was like, oh Philadelphia, that's that's in Asia. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Toronto in NA. I think like Washington and Shock are still gonna be probably a bit above them. Uh, but maybe they can figure something out with their individually talented players to just wrestle them out, mano a mano. Uh, without without the player name uh, um, and you know get something going mm-hmm. uh, so overall I think looking at the roster right let me just do a quick recap on my thoughts at least uh, the tank line seems average overall the DPS line seems average once again with obviously the exception of Hisu who's probably one of the uh, should I say it? Yeah, probably one of the best DPS players in NA at this point. Uh, the support line is something I'm really excited about. I'm optimistic about all of these players. I think if they can maintain consistency, they can really mold into a super competitive support line. Uh, and if they if this team can enable Sado and Hisu in the right way, I think this could be a team that uh, at least in a meta that that favors them, let's say a, a dive meta, obviously, uh, this team can probably make some uh, tournament runs, deep tournament runs. You could see them, like, I, I could see them making like a tournament final on, on a dive comp with Winston and Sombra, Winston, Sombra, Tracer, like you said. So, given a favorable meta like that, I think the defined will be absolutely amazing but in unfavorable metas and probably something like a ball sigma meta comes to mind uh, that's not where this team is likely to excel so a lot of this is riding on the metas for me but with versatile players like Sado, Kisu and especially the the support line uh, and maybe even throw nice in there because of his flexible hero pool they can at least be competitive in most of the metas that we are going to be seeing in this season. So I I do believe this is a sleeper pick in the NA region. Uh, 
it's a bit hard to place them, but I'm optimistic about their chances. That's all I'll say. Definitely not like a championship roster, but could get up there. Could get up there somehow. So yeah, those are my final thoughts on the refined. And do you have anything more to add? Yeah, I, th- I think you're quite right. Um, I think uh, they might struggle a bit on like Brawley, like Zarya, Ryan Combs, just because. I'm not too confident who will play Zarya for them. Um, I don't think Michelle Zarya is like top tier, so yeah. that's probably a, a bit of a concern. But yeah, I mean, they can be competitive in the right metas and they can snatch up a couple of wins for sure. I think this, this team is definitely not disappointing. It's just uh, there's a lot of potential in here that needs to be unpacked properly. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I think we've shared all of our points about the defined so let's round off this episode um thanks to everyone who's been listening so far we really appreciate it if you liked our review found our insights helpful do leave a like subscribe to the channel uh and click on the bell icon because we are going to be doing the very exciting shanghai dragons after this um so also share this video around with any Overwatch League fans, you know, we'd love for you to help us keep the conversation about the league alive and fresh. So thanks once again for listening, and this is the Overseers signing off. Bye-bye.